Welcome back to the channel everyone. This week we're looking at this thing and millions of things like this thing. We're talking about vintage cameras. If you're looking to buy your first ever vintage camera or film camera and you just don't have a clue what you're doing or what to look for or what's out there or even how to use it, stick around. The next 10 minutes are going to give you everything you could possibly need. So I'm by no means an expert in vintage and film cameras. I grew up digital and everything that I do works with digital cameras. But about three months ago, I bought this guy. It's a Nikomat EL and, or Nikomat EL, depending on where you bought it and what year. And I knew nothing when I bought this. Am I an expert now? No. Do I know a heck of a lot more than when I bought it? Yes. Can I pass on all those things I've learned to you so you don't have to spend three months doing that? Yes, I can. Yes, I will. That's right, you're welcome. And if you want to thank me, you can hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to look at a bit of everything fairly quick fire today. So, how do you know which cameras to buy? What should you be looking out for? What makes a good camera? Two, this stuff. Which film do you buy? What's the difference? What difference does it make to your photos? And how do you even load it? Three, how do you even take photos with this camera? Basics of shooting. Four, a little bit more detail on metering, exposure, aperture, and those sorts of things with vintage cameras. Finally, how to develop your film. Where do you even go to get it developed? How do they develop it and in what formats? How do you get a digital print? And what's the quality like? Okay, let's delve right in. Okay, what to buy? That's the first problem. And if you're looking for a vintage camera, chances are you are either lucky enough to have some kind of like photo exhibition to go to, but realistically you're on eBay or some other site looking through specs. Generally speaking, there are just a few companies that are pretty well known for making good quality film cameras back in the day. You're looking at things like Fujifilm, Nikon, and there are some from Canon and other brands too. Some of these cameras are almost fully electrical and automated. Some of them are absolutely zero battery powered, completely mechanical basics. It really does depend on what you want out of it and what your skill level is at as well. This Nikon Mat EL that I have is sort of like a hybrid in that respect. It's pretty much mechanical. However, there's a small battery that goes inside, just kind of inside where the lens is, it sits at the base here. And that battery gives it a little bit of power to give you some kind of metering measurement. So you have some idea of where to set your exposure. For me, half the fun of having this is that it's a complete challenge to use it. So I don't mind that I don't have a million features in there that allow it to automate everything. I like to kind of figure it out myself. If that's what you're after, then go old school and try to avoid too many electrical components. Go mostly mechanical. It's more fun anyway. A typical price for a good quality refurbished vintage film camera seems to be anywhere between sort of like $100 and $300. If you're going more than $300, the chances are you're being ripped off a little bit, right? You, you, you shouldn't need to do that. If you're going less than $100, I probably wouldn't be trusting whoever it was that refurbished it to have done a great job. Okay, when it comes to the type of film that you want to buy, there's a lot of film to choose from and I'm by no means an expert. Kodak Gold is a pretty standard film to look for. It's quite cheap, it's reliable and generally people like the way it looks because it looks vintage. Kodak Gold is basically going to give you warm tones which give you that kind of old fashioned look. But when you're choosing film types, it's a good idea to ask the store what the difference is because the main difference is kind of the tone and the tint that you get. Some give you more greens and purples, some give you more yellows and warmer tones. One of the other things to pay attention to is the ISO of the film. So if you're going to be shooting a lot during the daytime, you need to be buying film that has a low ISO, 100, 200. If you're going to be shooting in lower light conditions, you want to be aiming for 4 or 600 ISO film because once you load that into your camera, your camera has to stay at that ISO. It's not digital anymore, people. We can't just put the ISO wherever we want. That's not how this works. All right, so we're gonna lift this dial up and then when we pull it, that's gonna open up the back of the camera. Here she is. So, let's pop the roll in. Now, 
Just gonna pull this over. So the next job is to get the film and actually get these little squares to jam into this little nozzle here. So if we can get it to work first time, I'll be chuffed. So once you manage to do that, you then take a shot, move it forward again. There we go, it's hooked. Okay, now I know that the film's hooked on there, we can close this up. So this is on the S now, but I want to get it past the red just to be sure. So now I'm just going to move the film over by taking a shot, moving it along. It's on zero now, take another shot, move it along. Okay, we're now on one. And I think that, that basically now means we're ready to go. When you're shooting with a vintage camera, you really are going to have to think about everything you do in advance. If you shoot the person, make sure you're actually looking and centering the frame on their face in order to get a reading of what the light conditions are and what your exposure should be and what your shutter speed should be. Once you set everything up perfectly, then frame your photo the way you want. My advice, especially when you start off, is to make sure that you take maybe two or three shots of anything you're shooting. The shot that you think you've got right and then maybe overexpose and underexpose it slightly. Everything I've ever worked with has pretty much had really pinpoint accurate digital focus. In the EL, the center of the viewfinder actually glistens slightly. There's a shimmer in there when it's out of focus and it's only when you get it perfect that it becomes still, becomes really clear. It, it's kind of a way to help you find that, that perfect focus. The other thing when you're shooting is sometimes, especially if your vintage camera has some kind of metering assistance, it will probably give you a bar that tells you what your shutter speed should be. The problem is on these old cameras that they don't have every shutter speed. It'll go 60 to 120 to 200. And you might need something in between. The best thing to do is to play with the aperture slightly and alter that maybe one or two steps in either direction. And maybe if you play with that, you'll get to a point where you can perfectly line up your exposure and your shutter speed. If you have an aperture priority mode, use it to start off with if you're not comfortable because that way the camera's going to do everything else. All you've got to worry about is the depth of field. And finally, where on earth do you develop these things? Well, what I found actually is just here in the city that I'm in, there's like five places that will develop film. Uh, most of them within three hours. You just drop it off, they actually scan your, your negatives and then they digitally send them to a Dropbox or your email. So I have had to trek across the city to find this place. There's not many places that still develop films, so it's a trek in the heat. Um, but it's worth it when you get here. I'm almost there. The quality of the scan varies and the price kind of moves accordingly. But if you get a really good quality scan, then you can blow that image up to a reasonable size with very minimal noise. Very few places seem to actually do prints immediately anymore. It seems to be that most places prefer to do a digital scan. But again, I'm new to this. As I find out more, I'll tell you more. And that's it, quick fire, a few minute video just to give you some basic heads up before you go out there and start purchasing something. I'm gonna do a lot more videos in the future about these vintage cameras, different brands, different types and how to use them. So stick around if this is something that you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. There's an array of photography things on this channel. Stick with me and I'll see you in the next video.